And if people would help out by typing the names of the mushrooms that we're talking about into the chat box, that helps everybody uh, follow along a little bit more easily. So with all that being said, um, who has mushrooms that they would like to share? I see Lauren has some that she'll have ready in a few minutes. <clears throat> Anybody else have something they want to start with? Okay, I'm going to, uh, oh, good, Alex and Alex and Ananya, great. So why don't you go ahead and start? Oh, good, a lot of people have to stop. All right, Alex, why don't you go ahead and start? Um, Hello. Hi, sure. So um, this is actually my first meeting, but um, yeah, let me get the sh screen sharing up. Um, I went, to a local wooded area a day or two ago and uh, found some pretty nice mushrooms. So if you guys can see, um, I mostly wanna focus on these ones. Um, I believe I found some oyster mushrooms. Um, uh, so, you know, there's some of the more immature ones they were growing on uh, like a stump of a hardwood tree. Um, and I also have some very pretty turkey tail mushrooms. Oh, I should probably put these in the chat um, that I found on another dead hardwood in that area. But yeah. Okay, you want to look at the um, oyster ones again for a second? Yeah, sure. Um, let me just back to those yeah mm -hmm. so it looks like a pretty reasonable idea mm -hmm. i also took a spore print uh i didn't take a picture of the spore print right after but it was sort of a purplish color um and i'm i've been using the peterson field guide so that's that was sort of what made me think that that's what they'd be. Yeah, like a real pale lilac sort of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smoky, smoky lilac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a typical spore print color for Pleurotus ostratus. Um, sometimes they're paler. I found some also, and the print was just barely different than white. But it looks like what you got here. But But in the future, it's a good idea to show one or two fruit bodies harvested and turned upside down so we can see the uh, the stock and the underside. Awesome. All right, cool. You want to show your other ones? Or are you done? <laughs> you had your turkey oh, tails. Um, did, did you yeah. eat them? I did not eat them. Um, I'm, I just started doing sort of more legit mycology as a hobby. And so I'm, you know, I'm hesitant too, but yeah, it's always a good idea. Yeah, it's a a probably salt. a good choice when you're when you're first learning. But, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but it looks like you're getting some consensus. Mm -hmm. There's at least three people here that agree that it's uh, Pleurotus austriatus. So. Yeah, I don't have a good photo of the bottom of the turkey tails, but um, yeah, I there were okay. lots of them out there. Cool. All right, great. Well, thanks for sharing. Did, did you look at the bottoms? Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. They were like a pale white. Um, did you notice any pores, or was it were they smooth? So there was a little bit of pores. Um, they weren't big, but they were present. Very small pores. Yeah, that that that's the way you tell that that it's Trimedes and not um, a Sterium. But those mm -hmm. those really look like Trimedes. You know, those the color really looks like Trimedes. Yeah, but it's a good were... thing to keep in the back. Uh, in the back of your mind because that's the way you tell um when when you have uh, maybe um an observation that's a little bit ambiguous um you look under the underside and see if you can find pores and pores pores means tremetes and and smooth means sterium all right cool well thanks again alex all right anya would you like to 
take it away. Um, sure. Uh, I just I'm not sure how to share uh, the pictures. Like if they're on my desktop, um, how do I? Can I upload them here somehow? Or um, if they're on your desktop, you should be able to. Um, I guess have them open first, and then there's a share screen button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it's a green button. Okay. You see that on your toolbar at the bottom. Um. Of your Zoom window. Yes, I'm sorry, of your Zoom window. That's something, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, it's, where is it? Oh, I see it, wait, share, this, okay, the share screen thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just to find my folder. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, do you guys see it? Yes. Okay. So, um, I don't know if I should, I guess just try to make them big. So, um, and this was, I guess, um, uh, Flamelina, um, the velvet shank that I found, I think, I'm hoping that's what it is. Um, the photo's not enlarging on mine. Oh, it's not, I'm sorry. Um, I just see, I just see the four, four individual photos. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so I would say Anya, at this point, maybe hit the. If you go to the top mm -hmm. of your screen, you um you should go to hit stop share, screen sharing and then start again and see if it opens for us. Okay. Yeah, just open up one of the photos on on your home that's screen. That's what I I thought that's oh. what I did, but um I guess oh. they're not seeing it. Um. Hmm. Do you see the stop share button? Sometimes you have to hover your mouse at the top of your screen to make it show up. Oh, um, yes. Um, no, that's, <laughs> sorry. I, there's a pause, oh, stop share, I see it, okay. And then try sharing again. And sometimes, it, sometimes you have to trick Zoom into opening up for mm -hmm. you. Okay. Um, Still seeing your thumbnails. Yeah. And they're opening up on your. They are, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to, Anya, you could always um if you put them into a um email and email them to me, I can open them up for you. Okay, if you would you okay, that'd be great. Thank you. So it's the email address that came to you with the uh, you know the whole mm -hmm. taxonomy okay. thing. Okay, we'll do that and um, we'll move on to the next person while that comes through. That would be Andrew. Hi. Hi, Andrew. So I'm doing microscopy while we uh, do this. I just bought another uh, new uh, bayonet mount for my camera, so. Uh, I'm going to start with two here. Uh, I think one is a Mycena and the other one Dave thinks is a Tuberia. I don't know anything about Tuberia. It looks right, but, you know, I don't have enough uh, experience here. The other one I have is a grass smut, but I'm trying to get some uh, spore photos of it. Can we see my screen? Yes, we can see Mushroom Observer. Cool. Let's start with uh, maybe Mycena. I was in, uh, where was this? Uh, it was like close, it was technically, I guess, in Greenwood Wildlife Management Area in Browns Mills, but it was like right on the border of Pasadena. 
it was like on the other side of whatever that road is that the like terracotta factory is on and there's like a clay mine there and there's people ripping around on dirt bikes and stuff back there but um it's on uh it looks like a quercus velatina acorn or black oak there was a whole lot of these out there all on oak leaves or acorns uh the it was kind of hard to see or photograph the um the caps from above it just didn't want to come out yeah, it's they hard are to get white they, to come they out they are stri they are striated what was that it's hard to get white to come out cameras have a hard time um, yeah i was like messing around with the white balance but you know i only you only have so much daylight at this time so and there's also I didn't have any way to take it home with me without it just like getting destroyed and crushed. I think next time if I go out, if we have more, uh, I mean, I hope we don't have any more 60 degree days, but. Yeah. Did, did you smell these? I did. And they didn't really smell like anything. They just kind of smelled like, you know, oak tannins and soil. Yeah. Sometimes you have to crush um, a cap to get an odor. What, these look my, more. Does Mycena have like a an odor that they? No, I think these are something more marasmioid, like mycetinus. Okay. Um, were the stems kind of wiry, or were they really fragile? They were wiry for sure. Yeah, this and is like, like a like I, like I was like holding this in my hand and like moving it around, and it was like falling over when I was trying to photograph it, and mm -hmm. not, none of them broke. I handled a whole lot of them, was pulling them out and trying to separate. To photograph like mycelium on the leaves and stuff none of being just pretty uncooperative uh, may i say something yes i i get confused with between gymnopus and gymnopilus but there is a little species that grows on leaves and on acorns and is gymnopus or gymnopilus and rosaceus yeah, yeah, gymnopus is a possibility here too. Gymnopus and rosaceus. I'll write the oh, I did write the name. <laughs> I wrote the name there. Yeah. I I found many of them and I did them. I scoped them, and they like to grow on pine needles, on oak leaves. Something close to that species. Yeah. I just, I felt like I had no way to bring it home safely without it just oh. like being destroyed. Oh. So if, if we do get more warm days or whatever, like a couple in a row, we're in the fifties and sixties or whatever, I'll probably go back out there and see if uh, I can take some polyfill or something with me in a little box and try to uh, try to bring it home to get, to do actual microscopy with, okay. you know, get some real, get some real photos because I couldn't really find anything that looked like this just browsing you know, most of it was like uh, the little hemimycena or something like that. And these weren't, they weren't fragile like a lot of mycena are. Because mycena are generally like really fragile, right? Yeah, hemimycena are even more fragile. Yeah, they They're look like, like little like, mushrooms that fall apart pretty easily. Yeah, they look like they fall apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these are, I like Mar um, Maricel's suggestion, gymnopus. Um, gymnopus or, or mycetinus. Is another thing you might want to look. Mycetinus scorodonius. That's the one that smells like garlic, though. That's why I asked. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there's a few other mycetinus, but what Maricel said that gymnopus. That sounds. Now, good. Are there are there taxonomic relations between any of these genera, like at uh, like a family level or anything? Like is mycetina the same? Oh as yeah, what family are these AP? guys all in? I don't know. Hmm. I'd have to I'd have to refresh my memory on that. Uh, may I say something? Yeah. When I collect these little, I find all sort of tiny things. Um, I carry paper envel envelopes. Yeah. So I put a leaf, a folded leaf, and then I put the mushroom in it. So that way I preserve them and I bring them home. And, I, and just as half 
the half of a small envelope. I do that all the you time. You know, I didn't, I didn't even think of using like pine needles and stuff as packing material because I did have envelopes mm -hmm. and stuff with me, but it's just like, I just thought it would get crushed because all I have was like a backpack and, you know. That's what I do. And I put my envelopes like in one. Yeah, I guess it's like, you know, you, you can't win if you don't play, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. The next time I'll just take the risk and instead of uh, <laughs> you know, the worst thing that happens is it gets damaged and I put it in my planner out front. <laughs> and another thing about this, if they are marasmus or genopilus or genopilus, yeah. whatever they are, they revive. They, they what? They re revive. What's the word? They revive. Yeah, they, revive. If, if they yeah. dry out and you and you um, allow them to, them to humidify, they'll the caps will re-expand. Mm -hmm. And what is what's the size of the cap? Oh, one millimeter, mean, two millimeters. Like millimeters, yeah. Three, three millimeters, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, sounds. You, Seems like right to me. All right. I was just looking up the uh the relationships between Calibia and um, Mycetinus. So Calibias are in the Trichomotaceae family. And uh, what was the other one we were saying? Mycetinus. That's in the Ophiloitaceae family. Both in the but order Agaricales. When they split up Calibia, the did all the new genera stay in the same family? I, I suppose they did. I just saw Rhodocalibia was in <clears throat> Marasmia uh, Taceae, which ah. I think. Yeah. Um, so that is split up pretty far. Yeah. And somebody suggested one of the the colibias, the ones that have tubers at the base, and they grow from a an apple seed like tuber. So this one is not like that. Is not the one that's tuberosa. Yeah, yeah. There are three. Okay. That, that grows on dead mushrooms, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dead lactarius. I, I don't know. I could never identify the host, but they are like blackened. So, but yeah, they, usually a lot of times it's just a black mass that the mushroom has melted into, and then you'll still see the uh, colibia coming coming out of the mass. Yeah, it's usually lactarius. Would you can would this be a parasitic or symbiotic type of mushroom because it's growing on a pine cone? Probably it's a saprobe, I'd sapro. say. Yeah, saprobe. Yeah. That's a weird place for this to be growing. I, it looks like tubaria to me, and I would have proposed on mushroom observer at a higher level of confidence, and if not for the str rather strange substrate. Oh, yeah. Pilus penetrans too. It does that. I should have brought this one home with me too. It's just like one of those things where when I'm out there, I'm just like, okay. uh, I'm just taking photos and. Yeah, you know. Penetrans is Gymnopolis. Okay, Gymnopolis. Um, yeah. That has rusty orange spores. It's, I think that's in the, um, that's in a completely different family. I know that. And one thing about this, if it was Gymnopilus, Penetrans, it has a white mycelium at base and it loves. Uh, conifers on the pine cones or on conifer wood and to find it single or several of them sometimes they're a little or bigger but because of the weather is being so crazy sometimes they stay little mycelium definitely definitely seems to be well embedded into the pine cone the mycelium was really weird it was like straight up slime like i didn't see any like fibers and i kind of picked apart at the end here but like it was just like all goo on the inside it's kind of seemed like i don't think this is gymnopolis though yeah, the gills are this, the gills are kind of wide for that gills are wrong for gymnopolis right yeah this looks like tubaria to me and tubaria is a late season cold weather mushroom gymnopolis yeah. is more of a, a late summer early fall uh, uh -huh. mushroom sometimes spring also you'll get them yeah this is the only one i found like this 
but it was all uh right right in uh greenwood off of 72 so yeah to, to borrow your fruits on a variety of woody substrates um sometimes you'll find them on lawns just growing apparently from buried little pieces of wood they grow on wood chips they grow on sticks they grow on mulch and so this would not be that far removed from from that sort of substrate but this is still yeah. kind of weird growing right yeah. on the pine cone i have a picture of that exact same mushroom growing on a pine cone the same kind or the or or um the same mushroom the same kind of mushroom oh the uh st the striate cap margin makes it look a lot like the two the two barriers that i was looking at online that's like a kind of a defining feature for a lot of them right i mean not the only defining for feature. yeah tubaria furfuracea often has yeah. striations but not always it's probably what it is i think tubaria furfuracea yeah okay I'm gonna let somebody else go. If there's more time, I'm gonna to try to uh, get some uh, do some microscopy on this uh, grass smut or broom sedge, if you will. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. Okay. So let's see who is next. Uh, Shihong, and then I think we can circle back around to uh, to Lauren. And then if you want to, Christopher, you can show your picture. It'd be better if you sh uh, shared your screen, though. Uh, it's kind of I'm hard. literally showing a picture of my wife's phone. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, that, that could be Janopolis there. That was last winter at Double Trouble park same time of year yeah I, I only see a tiny picture yeah it's hard it's hard to it's really hard to zoom in like that on everyone has yeah. views on their things uh but possible it's possible it could be the same you found at the same time of the year yeah look, how big is that how big is that mushroom it looks a little bigger than the other one it's it's a little bigger, maybe just more mach, more mature as the cap opened up further. Yeah, tabari is our tabari mushrooms are always pretty small. They you'll rarely see one that's more than an inch and a half diameter. Uh, it's usually they're binder. under an inch. Cool. Well, yeah, that's a good possibility. All right, Shahong, do you want to jump in? Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Um, the first one I want to share is this polypore. It looks, it has hairs, tiny hairs on the cat. And if you, if I flip over, it has a tube, tube like uh, gels. And the attachment to the wood is white. I try to upload this to a naturalist that it did not come up with any any suggestion. Is it soft? It's pretty soft. Hmm. Yep, yeah, I I post you. I think that's postia. I yeah, think that's it's a postia cesia. It's just yeah, not it's, it's not as blue as it usually is. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought of as a postia. Yeah. Uh, can you type the name, please? Yeah. I was going to ask: Is that that blue present in the photo there? Is that like that's the normal color of the mushroom? Postia cesia is usually pretty blue. They call it blue cheese mushroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So some of the more regular shapes, some have like a, a head on them. So I wasn't sure if, if it was two separate mushroom or it's just the one with this weird shape. Um, so I wrote posteosthesia in there, but I guess we should say that with a caveat is that there, I think there's what, like there's like three different species that people call cesia that you, you, you need like microscopy to tell the difference. Okay. Oh yeah, I remember now. There was, oh yeah, like, oh the yeah. You, you, was a discussion. You, you, you were just put a uh, link in there. Yeah. Look. Yes. Isn't that too hairy for a postia? Oh, I mean. I don't think so. No, sometimes they're really hairy. And I'm just like scanning through pictures on my phone. I I think I have one on Mushroom Observer that's really hairy. No. I, I thought they were hairy too. No, yeah, I'm looking at some pictures of posters that are pretty darn fuzzy. So you mean uh, when they are young, they are blue color, or when they get older, they become blue? I think it's when they're younger. Okay. I think when they, as they get older, they kind of just kind of turn dingy. Because some of them can be really blue, like vividly blue. Okay. If you Google pictures of it, you'll see some pretty amazing pictures. But I, th I also think that they, yeah. they, they would have been growing earlier in the year, too. You're probably just looking at some yeah, older they still specimens. Have some blue shape here. Okay, let me. This is one. Uh, also, on the same log, I saw a lot of small mushrooms. I wonder if they are all different kind of mycenae. That's one, it have dark color. If I flip over, I cannot get the the root part. So I wasn't sure if it had blue gel or blue gel, or it's just because it's so thin and it reflects the color here. My guess is that they're probably white and it's just your photographs a little off in color. Yeah. Actually, I think there are a few species of mycena and not, not just subsaurilia that's really quite blue. Uh, but I think there's a few other ones that sometimes have a very slight bluish tinge on the gills. Um, and that's I think that's what these are is mycena. Okay. And on the same log, I saw this, it's kind of more open. Yeah, you do see that blue in that again. Yeah, it's close to the um, top here. It's kind of blue, yeah. Although it could just be the darkness on the wood showing through because the cap is somewhat translucent. Yeah. So it could be that also. Yeah. So did, did you ID these as mycena? Uh, actually, I, I tried to upload to I, I that's it doesn't give me any suggestion either. That's why I bring, bring up to this meeting. <laughs> and this yeah, is I, I was finding thing. a lot of similar mycenas a couple of weeks ago on hemlock yeah. wood. I don't know what kind of wood this is. Oh, and that's another Different mycena looks yeah, like. Yeah, this has some pinkish uh, at the at the breakage part. And all this is on the same log. Well, it's possible they could be the same species and just one batch is darker because they get less less light, maybe. Um, some, I mean, mycena is sometimes come in in a variety of shades, even even a single species. Darker My scenes are hard to identify. Um, sometimes you can crush them with your fingers and smell and get a like a chlorine type odor and that might help. Um, noticing the gill attachment could help. 
um, doing microscopy helps. And e even after you do all those things, these, mm -hmm. these guys are hard to ID the species. Yeah. Susan, um, did you have something you wanted to? I was gonna say, I think the older ones look to me like maybe they've been frozen. Um, and they've changed color a little bit because of the chemistry of freezing. These oh, are kind yes. of the same. And these maybe came out more recently with less, you know, stayed fresher before. They're going to freeze by now, too, I should think. Yeah, this was uh, December 31st. We have a pretty warm week. Warm and wet. Yeah, to me, they kind of look the same. It's just... They may be in different stages of life, but the darker ones look to me like they might have been frozen. I see. Somebody asked Shihong if you can magnify them. There's a little okay. little plus sign at the top. Um, if you click on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what Susan said. Those dark ones looked a little bit beat up, like they had been frozen and thawed. And these just look nicer. To the top right in the black area, Shihong. In the top right black area. It looks like a magnifying glass. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Look. Yes. Okay, so I found the same thing, the same dark ones, and the same ochre ones on the same wood, and I did micro for both. I don't have that observation today to show it, but I can do it next weekend. They are the same. <laughs> I ah. could not believe it. Ah. And I crushed the dark one, and it smells like mm -hmm. bleach. But when it's older, the smell is almost gone. No yeah. smell. So, and when it's younger, it's more visit. Sticky, when it's older, it's not so much. Okay. And it, yeah, it's the same, the same thing. And I say, I thought there were two different things. They are the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, that, so, that and it's what, so that supports what Susan's saying. Mm -hmm. So they smell like meat? Like bleach to me. I don't know. The, the dark ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Next time I try to smell. I would. Or you crush it a little bit. Crush a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me see. There. Another thing I want to hear is. Let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit. This one. Um. I actually uh, upload to a, a naturalist. It's just a Flavia. Mm -hmm. That sounds right. Flavia. What is it? Tremolosa? Is that right? Yeah, but uh, Flavia. Incarnata. Flavia, yeah. Oh, Incarnata, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, Remember, I see something like this before, but it it gave me a totally different name. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I would bring it, this up here. Are you saying I naturalist gave you a different name? No, no, no. It's oh. um, or we I, did. <laughs> what's no, what's no, the I, other I, genus that's a synonym for Flebia? Mary, yeah. Mary something. Morbillus. Yeah, because I saw for Flebia, it's only Merulius. Merulius, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking Flavia is always like a crust fungi, but this doesn't look like a crust. It is considered a crust. It's one of the thickest of all. So it could be both. Uh, it's considered a crust. Uh, I uh, and I wanted to add something that usually is growing together. <laughs> it's usually growing together with its host, which is a sterile species. Did you notice that that it was growing yeah. with other groups? Yeah, the sterile. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It parasitizes the sterile. Okay. Oh, yeah, and another thing that I remember, when it gets older, it gets these yellow tones that you have at the... Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, that's all I want to share today. Thanks. I will stop so other people get a chance. All right. Thanks, Jehovah. Okay. Let's do this. Um,
where did it play? If you hover your mouse, yeah, your cursor towards the top of your screen, a little toolbar should appear and it says stop share. It's a using two different screens. So let's see where's there you go. I just okay. I did it for I did it for you. Okay, thanks. Okay, well thank you for sharing. So I think Lauren is next. And then as we're everyone's talking, if um, there was a, an anonymous request, if we could be careful of cutting people off. I know it's hard when people, it's hard on Zoom when you're talking because I think the mics don't pick up differently, but uh, just wanna give everyone a chance to yeah. put their two cents in. Okay, so this is Lauren's stuff. Are you speaking, Lauren? Because we're not hearing you. Are you saying Warren? No, uh, Lauren. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, is this Warren's stuff? Uh, Warren, are you the person that emailed me your stuff? Yes, I did send them, but I did not send that one. Oh, okay. Because I do have your stuff queued up, ready to go. So. But since you since you're showing us this, Warren, you might as well you might as well tell us what it is. I'm sorry, I've never see, I've never seen that picture before. Oh, <laughs> that's not my photo. Okay, I understand what's going on. Okay. L so, Lauren is working on her mic. She'll... Yes, I, I just read that. I understand what's going on. Okay. Um, so Lauren's mic is not working correctly. And we'll give her a second to get it together. Hello? Hello? Can you hear? Luke? Yes. Hi, is this okay. Mike? Oh, yeah, Mike. I had to fix it. Okay, we're good. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Hello. All right, let's try this again. Okay, you can see this? Yes. Okay, so I'm excited about this because um, I got the Polypore book and my book helped me identify this. And I think and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, that it's, um, is it lentinous or lentinous tricholoma? Hmm. It looks like what's in the book, um, lentinous tricholoma. Mine was a little bit, the margin is hairy. It's a little bit less hairy than the one in the book, but otherwise it's looks like the same thing. The, ba the base is very, very unique. Anybody? <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with that species. I, I was that. thinking, what about like Poliparis auricularius or that other one? What's the other one that we see over the winter? Um, Brumalis. Brumalis. You don't think... Um, Various, right? The, or um, leptocephala. I I think that the the current tubes maybe are wrong. Pores are wrong for those. The stem itself seems almost similarly lacquered to the reishi mushroom, just of a lighter color. Like it, it has a similar rugged thickness and sturdiness to it. Yeah. yeah. We're no, not, no, we're... this is very thin, no fleshy, no hard. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking like Polyparis brumalis. Would you mind putting that in the chat so I can look that up? Because yep. this really did look exactly like the lentinous that was in the book. Somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm looking it. in the book right now. Somebody um, did put it, it in does. There, yeah. It does. And 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 you know what? I when I see this in the book, I'm looking at something that I think I've never ID'd. And when I look at this picture. 
I'm looking at something that I think I never ID'd. So yeah, I I think you might have it. Look Thank at the you. middle of the, of the cap. <laughs> has a little tiny hole in the middle, like a little depression that's dark. If you go yeah. back to the um uh for yeah, that and that looks exactly like uh the one photo mm -hmm. in the polypore book. And um the hairs should be really long though on the <laughs> on the margin of the cap. Are the hairs like pretty long, like a few millimeters? So Dave, um, I read that description the other day and what it says is with age, the hairs are less long. Uh, so the uh, one, the, this one, the hairs are there. They're, they're sh much shorter, but they are there, but they say that's an age thing. Lauren? Yeah? There is one, there is one more possibility. It's called polyporous ciliatus. Okay, would you mind putting that in the chat so I, I can did. look that up? I did. Oh, thank did. you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. As I'm showing, I can't. I'm not seeing um, the oh, chat. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. And all of those species have hairs on the edges of them. Okay. That we're, that we're talking about Brumalis, ciliatus. What does the pore sur surface of that thing look like? The, um, so white to current pores. We can't see the shape. Oh, um, Mike, how do I zoom in on this? Sorry, we have like a whole new setup. It's really weird. I don't even know how, I don't know where the, where anything is anymore. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, it's very small around pores. Yeah. Okay. How do I get rid of this thing? Oh, that looks consistent. Yeah, I got around pores. <sighs> Anyway, it was cool, and it you know it's um it's really little, I mean not really really little, but it was small. It just I seems have. to have a bulbous like this pseudo form of bulbous base similar to an amanita, like right where it connects to the twig, but yeah. it, it's not. Yeah, it's I like mean, almost cool. it's like almost there, but it fails. I found one. Well, I think we're definitely in the right area with polyporous um i think we're pretty close in that region i'm able to zoom in further with my phone just by dragging the screen and i can tell you that those pores look pretty round to me yeah right which is consistent with this with the lentines. Okay, well then lentinus it is. <laughs> Just kidding. Did you did you try did you try getting um spores off of it? I did I kind of I kind of did it uh made a lazy attempt. I just put it on some tin foil but and then forgot to cover it and it didn't drop anything. <laughs> okay. I think all of the things mentioned have white spores. Yeah, no, and no smell. I think the decurrent fertile surface is is um, is going to be a useful thing to try to match up. All right, I'm going to have to unshare and then reshare. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> Pause share. Oh, there it is. Hold on, guys. Um, and then a whole bunch of boring stuff, but you know, it was stuff. These were the biggest puff balls, meaning, you know, obviously not, you know, excluding Calvatia, Gigantia and that kind of stuff, but these were the biggest small puff balls I've ever seen. Um, not that you can tell from this, but they were, they were like twice the size, two to three times the size of like a normal puff ball. It was odd. I don't know if it, what, so how big across were they? Um, they were a couple of inches across and several inches tall. Yeah, I don't know. They were just weird, but 
Um, and then this looks to be the Mycena that everybody else is finding. I guess. Yeah, they look like the other ones we just saw. Yeah, I found these Quite in um, Hunterdon County and then like a day later I found them in Morris. So I guess they're everywhere. Um, Vigilance. That's pretty. My girl. And then, uh, oh yeah, what the heck is this? <laughs> I think this was on the hemlock, or at least it was in an area of mixed woods. Oh, Sorry, I, know I know the name of this. I know this thing. It's in this. Multiclavula what? Multiclavula mucida. <laughs> Multiclavula mucida. I wrote it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and it. The, green, oh, wow. the green is related to it. That's what oh, I'm I see. Some kind of like, like, like a colossal like, guy. That's what I, I always, um, I'm never clear on this. Is has there ever been any real consensus? Is this like a lichenized fungus or? Mm -hmm. I think so. I, 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 always, read, I always hear that, but I'm never quite sure. I read that in this um, James, this guy expert in, in lichens. He has a section for those. Oh yeah? James. And there are like 15, I forgot his name. The guy in New York? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wrote a book about those. Um, and, I mean, about lichen. And, uh, and there are like 12 or 13 species, but this is yeah. very common, yeah. This one likes to grow on wood, on very wet, rotten wood, yeah. Oh, cool. All right, thanks. Um, oh, here, Marisol, what's this? Uh, are you, <laughs> detail is too far. Can't see. All right, let's Good. see. How do I zoom in? All right, well, that's going to clearly take me forever. So um, we'll skip on that for now. Okay. Um, is this orange paint or, <laughs> or a fungus? It was on a boulder. Or I guess that would be like a lichen, wow. right? It's I saw it and I'm like, is this paint or is this something else? It's pretty hidden. Who knows? <laughs> Details. That is magnificent. Yeah, it could just be paint. I'm not really sure. <laughs> the way the edges seem to straight out, I would say no. Hmm. Has anybody ever seen an, a, like a lichen or would that be lichen if it's growing on a boulder? Oh, yeah, they grow on boulders. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lichens yeah. do that. Yeah. Oh, you see that there are tons of that around where I am. Not this color, but still. I found a orange ones. Yeah. What was that, Susan? Cyano, cyanobacteria. Is that? I used to see something like this on the tombstones where, next to the where I used to live. That's what I was thinking. It might not be a fungi. It could be some other type of microbial culture. Susan, you said you've seen these on tombstones? I've seen something that color and that crustos on like limestone or, or it isn't on granite. It's usually the older tombstones. Um, and they have to be exposed kind of to water often. Cyanobacteria, we need Dorothy. She would be able to tell you. All right. Well, maybe I'll try to get a better shot and um, send it to her or something. Be sure to keep your mask on, social distance. For what? <laughs> Looks like you've her? been there. What? <laughs> I have a question, well, Lauren. At the still point where you're dealing with bacteria, it's best not to breathe it in if you don't know what it is. Oh, I was not going to inhale it. You licked it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote a sound on it a couple of times, but okay. And then the last thing I wanted to show is because I saw somebody else um, showed some flebia. I wanted to show the flebia with the um, the sterium. 
So I found this the other day. And there you have it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, if I may interrupt, I want to go back to the uh, Lentinus, please. All right. Um, I found out that Lentinus um, tricholoma has been deprecated. The proper species name is called Lentinus flexipes. And that one is a uh, distributed, you know, in the south, uh, deep south of the USA. We don't find it here in Northeast. So most likely this is a species of polyporus, considering how thick the cap is. I, I, I would agree too. I was looking at that too, the, the tricholoma, the Latinus tricholoma or whatever it was deprecated to. The flexipes. Flexipes, right. The furthest north I saw it was in Texas. And exactly. Down into Central America. That's why I was going to ask if the Bissettes gave a range in their book. I don't remember what they said about it. So, so Igor, you think this is a polypore, I'm um, sorry, say what is it again? It's some kind of a polyporus, which, which, whichever, you know, the usual suspects, I think. Like Brumalis or Ricularia. Leptocephalus, yeah, Badius, that kind of thing, right? Where's the best place to look for information about those? I, I Googled it and uh, got um, a, a picture of it from, uh, from Texas. Um, and and I, I think the Basset book says it's a Gulf Coast thing. Um, but this wouldn't be the first uh, Gulf Coast species to turn up in New Jersey. Yeah, but if you look at the distribution map of Flexipes on Mushroom Observer, they're all in the south. There's just nothing upstairs. Uh -huh. So it's not like a, a, a Gulf Coast species crawling up the Atlantic coastal plains of New Jersey. No, it's not. So. All right. Yeah, also the, the pores really don't look like Lentinus. They look too small. And the, 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 the cap is too thick. You know, those are more uh, thinner and more flexible. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Lentinus, that is. Okay. You can find a lot of that information online, Lauren. Like I'm on Messiah, messiah.edu, looking at Brumalis. You know, okay. um, you know the other one, um, Archilarius. There's the other one that um, Marisol mentioned. You can find all those descriptions online. They're probably in the Bassett's book too. I can't imagine they wouldn't be in there, that new Bassett book. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Okay. I think at this point, I'm going to I think that covered everyone. So I'm going to share my screen. I have Anya's stuff and then I'll start going through the uh, other stuff that I've received. Yeah, you're right. This thing's pretty skinny. That's a, that's a chunkier cut tab. Okay, Anya? Yes. Okay. Are we seeing the uh, the velvet shanks, the flamelina? No, I'm not seeing anything. Okay. I mean, I'm seeing. Um... Just give me one second. I'm just going to reshare it. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the, the flamelina that I found. It was pretty small, pretty small cluster, but um, I don't know. Um, and I don't know what it's, um, I, I guess it's growing next to some kind of um, crust fungus, that, but I have no idea what that is. That's on the bottom of it. I kind of actually wasn't focused on that. Yeah, I should have a dark fuzzy stem. What are you saying, Nina? Fuzzy stem, right? I can't see it. Is that a stem? Mm -hmm. Sure. Right up in there. Right. Yeah, talking about the polypore. Yeah, I see a dark stem. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, they've got the they've got the velvety dark stems. Okay. Sometimes okay. flamulina volutes when it's young doesn't, but these do. I found some this week that had one patch where had the black stem and then a patch on the other side of the log was completely like a yellowish, pale yellow snipe. By the way, there are like seven kinds of uh, flamulinas. <laughs> I was, we were having a discussion in some of these one group in Facebook and I said flamulina velutipes and then somebody jumped on and said, wrote the names of all these flamulinas that are found in the US. So I just do they all look like this? Are they all no, they are paler. Yeah, I couldn't, but I, I think that it's easy rec to recognize flamulina velutipes because of this type. It's dark with this uh, very velvety uh, aspect mm -hmm. texture. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't know if we have found other kinds of flamulinas around here yet. I think there's a flamulina that grows on poplar wood specifically that looks almost like these so that would be difficult to tell apart. Well, like pop, uh, flamulina populacola or something like that? Yeah, but it's much paler. Oh, oh that one's paler? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it looked the same. the Google picture of it. Okay, so what else we have? So the here? one below it, is that a, um, the crust or whatever, the pinophora? Yeah, it's not very detailed, because honestly, like, I didn't even really notice it until I saw this. <laughs> oh, it's a little out of focus. It, it could be that, it could be that pinophora, but it probably could be a lot of other things too. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. That's a cool picture. Yeah, I found actually like the next, my next couple of pictures are all from the same tree. It's a hardwood tree. I'm not sure what kind, but yeah. So it, it was, um, I guess these are wood ears or I'm not sure exactly like the species, but yeah, like the oysters and the lichen um, that you just, so, and then some kind of like tooth fungus that's, covering um, the bark. I'm not sure what that is. And you know, it's kind of hard to tell, but it was like, it had like little teeth almost. Is that the, um, what is it? What we used to call Spongipolis pachydon. It's got a new name now. I think I think that's Arpex. Look at, look at the way it's just resupinate. Spongipolis pachyderm or pachydon, um, it's like it's almost like a polypore, you know. It's got like big sessile um, uh, fruit bodies that that have you know a separate fertile surface and a cap and so forth. This looks like Urpex lactia to me. Oh, you mean the two, the fun, the tooth fungus? Or the tooth fungus, yeah. Fungus, yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's Urpex. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I've heard of that. Urpex. Urpex lactia or lacteus? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, but wait, wait. Now we look on this left look side. That. Now I'm going to start to agree with Luke. Yeah, it looks like there's caps over there sticking out of the of the wood. Hmm. It looks, a combi looks like a combination of lion's mane and hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Those teeth are a little long for Urpex also, which really, the teeth are really just torn apart tubes yeah, um I, I think that's what it is what do they call it now or Ur, or piss or pachydon <laughs> or piss oh okay new name for that one yeah i think that's probably what that is yeah, yeah good call luke oh, i'm sorry can somebody type that into the, the chat um, yeah, can somebody type that in i can't type with sharing my uh screen so well you can just say spongipelis pachydon and you would get to it well, on Mushroom Observer, is still Spongipelis. Okay. That's, I think that's definitely a name that's getting kicked around pretty hard. And I Igor put the species name for these wood ears up, too, and that's mm -hmm. my understanding. I see. Okay. And they so what, are, what, what species correct. did we put on that? 
Angiospermarum. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then you say these are on the same tree, right? Yes, the oyster. There were actually a number of clusters on that tree. Like that tree is not long for this world, I don't think. Because um and yeah, they were just, I guess, because of all the rain we had recently, they were very like large. So I, I don't know like what exact species that would be, but like Pleurotus something. Um, I think the late late season ones are mostly Australia's. Okay. That's that's what my understanding has always been. This I measure spores from these guys sometimes, and the late season ones have always had the shorter spores, mm -hmm. uh, making it Australia's. Yeah, I didn't get that exact. I just yeah. Okay, that's a good picture. Thank good you. You're showing off uh, the different details of this. Thanks. Okay, and then you have a, a lichen. Yeah, that's from the same tree. Also, I I don't know much about lichen at all, so I was just like, oh, blue, that's nice. But um... although it's neat on here, you can see the little uh, the little fruiting bodies. Mm -hmm. Brilliant detail. Uh, it's rare. I I have rarely ever seen that realm of development for a lichen. So if you take these little fruiting bodies and put them on a microscope. You'll see the uh, little as the uh, assai and the uh, ascospores in them. So they really are just little mushrooms. Oh, that's cool. Anybody want to venture a guess on the site on this one? Um, Karen says the the um, light um, the pale one with the with the little sort of fruit bodies as it might be Fissia, P-H-Y-S-I-A? S-C-I-A. S-C-I-A. And the uh, green stuff would be, uh, what's it? What's it? It's it's called? Candelaria. Candelaria, maybe. Okay. There's, but there's two different lichen species here. That's, that's pretty clear. Uh, well, at least two. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Sorry, my picture. Yep, it looks like that's all of them. All right, thanks, Anya. Okay, so that now I'm going to circle back around to the one to the emails that I got. So I think Warren was the first one that emailed me yesterday. So Warren, if you would like to take your turn and there you go. Yeah, uh, these were taken in the Great Swamp just a few days ago and uh, very colorful. And I saw something, somebody mentioned the term turkey tail. Is that possible? Do you have a photo of the underneath? Yeah, this is my <laughs> first time on the ID Tuesday, yeah. so I wasn't sure that you had to shoot this from all different yeah. angles. So um, that I was gonna say that's the that's the uh, the number one question that everyone's always gonna ask is you got the right. underside Twitter graph, yeah. but I mean even without seeing the underside, I would venture to guess that you probably are right. These are turkey tails. What is the genus on it? Oh, Tramedes versa color. Okay. The reason why uh, somebody asked that though is because there are, um, like Dave was saying earlier. There are other lookalikes that could be, this could be, probably not. I mean, but you can get fooled sometimes. And the telltale is when you flip it over and you see whether it has pores or whether it's completely right. smooth. Right. Just, a, just another layer of um, details to help with your ID. Okay. <clears throat> so, but you can probably, you can be pretty positive that these are Tremedes. Uh, that's kind of similar to the last one we saw. This one was taken in Grover Cleveland Park, which is in Caldwell, uh, not too long ago. And I love the colors on this thing. Uh, nothing's been photoshopped here. It is as it was. And uh, again, you're only getting one view of it. So I don't know if that's going to be good enough to identify it.
I don't know. It certainly is pretty, though. You are right. These bands and colors. Is that all the same mushroom? But what what about that white my uh, patch that's right in the center? Would that maybe be a parasitic fungi? I, I think it's the hairs on here that are just weathering away. I think. Looks like it stopped and started growth. So that's why it's kind of a weird shape and weird color. Mm. It does look like a turkey tail to me. The darker band would be about where it stopped growing, say, a couple of weeks ago or in, at some point in time. And then plus had a burst of rain and started growing again in all directions. Mm. Mm. I got to say, this is the most magnificent turkey tail I've ever seen. It's like a yeah. hill. It is beautiful, that's for sure. It's a good picture. Yeah, yeah it is pretty. Yeah, great job focusing. This was also taken in Grover Cleveland Park. This goes back several weeks ago. Uh, and the tree had gone down, as a lot of trees have gone down over the last couple of years. And this was growing out of the base of the tree where it ripped up. And um, again, you're only getting that view. <laughs> Okay. Any mushroom. Yeah. One of the armillaria melia complex. All right. Did you catch did you catch that, Warren? Uh yeah, I, I've got I've got them written down here. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Well you like Again, these, you like these things, don't you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm fascinated by the colors and, and the rings of these things. Uh, lately, when you go out there, all you see are kind of variety of shelf fun fungi. There's weren't too many mushrooms around. Uh, this was also taken in the Great Swamp. Okay, cool. So another another turkey tail. Yeah. This stood out. This was in the Great Swamp, and the color really stood out in the forest. So this is probably sterium, not probably. It is a sterium, probably complicatum. Mm -hmm. I, would guess I agree. By how thin it is, it looks kind of smooth on top, like not very hairy. Mm. It is, a, it is a pretty magnificent magnificent color, too, if you think about it. Mm. Oftentimes, we over, I think I do personally, overlook these complicatums because they, you see them so often in the wintertime. But you're right. It is a pretty brilliant orange. This is why they get so many dyes from fungi. Uh, a dyer, to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Nature produces beauty that can't be replicated by synthetic means. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had one other picture that I didn't send you, but uh, I had sent a picture to iNaturalist and uh, it was an insect. I'm, I'm doing this project where I'm taking pictures of insects that are found on milkweed plants, which are quite a variety. So I sent this thing in and they identified it as an Asian lady beetle call harmonia and on the back of the beetle a second person who identified it said you've gotten two for one here because you also have a fungus known as hesperomyces that's growing on the beetle's elytra <laughs> and wow. i had to look up uh, that particular fungus but it seems to be a fungus that grows on non-native beetles from what I had gathered, it was all on the back of this little bug. That's, I think that's an STD actually. It's a ladybug STD. <laughs> yeah, I've heard um, that too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah that's a- Nature's catastrophe uh, with I, I, listened, I listened to an interview with this guy, Damon Ty, and he uh, <laughs> ended up sending uh, a, a sample that he found and posted on INAT to somebody at Harvard who was studying them. And he ended up like it was a new species that 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 he had huh. found like in Oakland, California, or something. So that's like we don't we don't know a whole lot about the ladybug STDs. 
it doesn't i don't think it really affects them but it is uh, it says that they tend to have shorter lives or tends to do something to them uh what's interesting is that they're coming in these different bugs and they're bringing other things with them that are not native apparently because they don't seem to be infecting the native beetles that are found on that plant huh. Huh. That's pretty cool oh, that you were able to. Means we should work to make an insectoid abstinence program. <laughs> but Warren, you should you should um, if you if you're going to join us next week, you should definitely send some pictures of that. I think we'd be interested in seeing that one. Uh, I might be able to do it if you want me to share the screen if if I can handle this thing here because it's. Um... Should I yeah, try we have, it? Yeah, we have time. Go ahead if you want to. Um, All right. So a, I uh, just truck. click down on the bottom here. Yeah, uh, your, your share okay. screen. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, share. And then uh, I want to lower this. I ha Oh, we can't lower that thing, can I? I think I had it up above, but now I don't see it. Uh, it was from iNaturalist. Click on the tab to the right. The tab to the Nothing. right. Go to the left a little bit more, just to the left of the plus sign. Plus, plus sign. Another a trick to Ward is that toolbar that you're seeing. If you, um, you can yeah. click on that and move that around, the zoom toolbar. Oh, if okay, it's, okay. It's yeah. your tabs. All right, let's uh, do this. Here it is, I think. Yep. Yeah, here it is. Yep, we're seeing it. You're seeing it, and you see the. We see the ladybug. Yep. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, I see the see the fungus. Yeah, that's Very it. good picture. Now, the response to that was interesting. I'm wondering if I can get back to it. It's going to keep going bigger and bigger. How do you get it smaller? <laughs> wait, wait. Stop moving for one second, if oh. you would. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that's a. You got a really good shot there. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you um click outside of the picture, it'll just go back to your eye naturalist. Okay, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, all right. Now here's the comment: uh, Asian lady beetle, and then down below, somebody sends in. You could duplicate the observation for the Hesperomyces fungus on the beetle's elytra. The elytra are those covers over the wings that beetles have. So I got a two for one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So there you go. So oh, that's cool. all I have to show, I guess. I will well, thanks, send, it back, send it back to you. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I, I, can, I can do it on my end. Oh, OK. okay. That was super well, cool. So it's for concern because ladybugs are an essential component of pest control for many yeah. different forms of flora. Yeah, that's true. Are you saying something, Brandon? Yeah, I was just going to ask if that's a parasitic fungus. You said it doesn't necessarily kill the ladybug, but it reduces the life. Is that correct? Uh, that's according to looking it up on Wikipedia, which I trust about 95% of the time. Um, yeah, it, it did say that it has an effect on the health of the uh, beetle. So cool. I posted a link to an article in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Warren. Make sure you look at the chat because there's some feedback for some of your stuff, some links that might. Uh, I'm doing that. that yeah. So. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, thanks again, Warren. Thank you. Now I'm going to go back here. I think. Um, let's see. Okay, Dave, you are next. So take, take this okay. chunk up here at the top. Yeah, yeah, do those. Yeah, start from the top. There's a lot of things tonight. People have a lot of things. So I think I'll, we'll just stick with five. So, okay, so I thought this was sterium when I found it. It was pretty flimsy, um, sort of elastic. I couldn't find any pores on the underside. And I thought it was sterium until I looked at spores. I got a good spore print from this and uh, mounted spores in, in some Congo red. And that picture will be coming up. And I, I, and I got a picture, the pictures aren't great. There's one picture of, of the top and one of an underside. 
Um, sometimes the camera just doesn't want to focus very well. Um, yeah, if we keep moving through the pictures, it's okay. So that's that's the top, and the next picture is an underside, and um, yeah, that's the top. Looks like it's a little little bit tomatose. Um, and this was in wet weather. There's the, the underside. And I, and I didn't think to look with this um, dissecting microscope until after it dried out, but I couldn't find any pores. So, so I'm thinking some kind of sterium, but then I scoped the, the spores, which that'll be coming up soon. Yeah, like you said, I can't see any pores there. Um, so, so I just posted it as fungi because these don't look like sterium spores to me. These are sort of like lacrimoid, pip shaped. They're pretty wide. You know, I know that not, one, Dave. What's that? It's Crucibulum Laeve. Oh, you, oh, you've got a, you've got a name. So, yeah, because I know it because I found it a long time ago and I was, I found it drop uh, shape spores and I was perplexed because the only one with the drop uh, shape form is the yeah. Crucibulum laeve. And it happens that Crucibulum laeve does the resupinate fuse form. It's the same, just had another form. Is this so? Is this a genus or is this a species? Crucibulum. I'll write the name. I'll write the name. Oh, cru oh, crucib crucibulum. Is that is that a genus? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. New one. New one for me. Let me let me confirm the name. I have it in my list. Okay? Yeah. So yeah, I'll definitely have to look this up. And I um, did the micro of both. I found both forms on the same tree, and it's exactly the same thing. And you will find information online if you look. Did you find you look? Yeah, carefully? I'll look online. I just I had no, I've never heard of this before. See, I did. So, I did. No, I didn't I did. think it was sterium. That's why I posted it as fungi. The reason why it's listed as sterium is because uh, somebody else, came, Alan Rockefeller, came on and said that he thought it was sterium, and no, so I just I wanted to wait and talk to you all, you know, before I decided to weigh in on on his um, proposal. Um, because I didn't think it was sterium, actually. The spores are wrong. I'm confused with the name. If it is, it is Cylindrobastidium evolvens, I'm confused. It starts with the letter C, but I am confused. Give me time, okay? You yeah, can do something so you'll, put it, you'll put it into the chat? I will. I'm, I'm trying to find the right one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So that looks like I, I'm going to have mystery solved there. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. So I found these geastrum. And the more I try to read about these sort of robust geastrum species, the more confused I get. And the more it seems to me like no, nobody really knows how to name these things. Um, so there's these three names that um, I don't know if they're interchangeable or if there actually are really good solid differences you can point out. Um, the three names are Cicatum, Triplex, and what's the name that I put for this one? It starts with F, Fimbri something or other, um, Fimbriatum, and, and Rufescens. Yeah, Rufescens is, is another one. Um, Cicatum is kind of small, actually, so I think I can rule that one out. But um, so this one guy, John uh, Steinke, I think his name is, um, he says he's he's pretty sure these are gastrum rufescens. Uh, but the more I look, the, I look up information on these species of gastrum, the, the more it seems to me like, I mean, does anybody really know what gastrum rufescens is? Gastrum um, um, fimbriatum is? Um, what are the differences? And they point out these little differences like um, the depression surrounding the beak. So, 
on the ones that I found, and this one, by the way, was solitary, this one we're looking at now, and the others were all in a big cluster, sort of partially underground. I think they're probably all the same. They weren't, they were close together, you know, a few steps apart, really. Um, and, but the other ones that were in the cluster, some of them showed a depression and some of them didn't. So this is that same one that was solitary. And um, let's see, I think they probably have a photo. Another thing that's pointed out is whether or not the, the head is connected to the base by a short neck. That's another thing that Michael Quo says, Rufescens has a little, um, a little neck. Um, this one did not. These, these didn't, the ones I looked at closely did not have a little neck. Um, the spores are very small um, on, on these. I looked at spores from three different fruit bodies and um, two and a half microns up to about a little less than, four. I think I was one spore that looked like it was four microns. And that includes the um, ornamentation, which, um, which are these, these thin warts that sometimes tend to be kind of closely packed together. So you may as well count them as part of the ornamentation. Now, what I did here was I, I kind of put some pressure on this one to see if I could reveal the presence of a neck uh, connecting the, um, the head to the base and I couldn't find a neck. So another thing that's pointed out is sometimes the Astrum triplex, um, which has a supposed to have like a saucer shaped collar right around the base of the head. Um, sometimes the collar doesn't form because the rays don't break apart the right way. And so, so could I rule out triplex for this one? I don't know. So then I look in, in Rudy's book um, and, and he's got um, Fimbriatum, I think he has. Wait, I've got Rudy's book right here. And, um, he's only got one species in there. And, and the spore range is like from, like from two and a half to seven or something like that, which, which would seem to me to probably include more than one species. Um, uh, where's, I guess I don't have that book right here. I thought I did. Um, so anyway, it's just kind of interesting. I think, you know, these seem like they might be worth studying um, or having sequenced or something. These were old though. I just threw them out. They weren't in very good condition. Um, another thing that's pointed out is whether or not the beak has folds or ridges, which this one does. Um, so these little details are, are, are attributed to one or another of, of these three different species, Fimbriatum, Rufescens, and triplex, and um, I'm I'm kind of mystified by by this. Um, so, like I said, this one guy said he's he's pretty sure these are rufescens, um, but I can't really find any any very convincing evidence um, in the in the books I have and on the online sources to convince myself that's what they are. Dave. Yes. Did you have the book Gasteromycetes of fungi of North America? As Gasteromycetes fungi of No, fungi. no, I don't have that. I oh, can that send you the info. I can send you the info. And yes. and I and I wanted to tell you that I have found the Astrum triplex and even if it is old you can tell you can see the color. This one yours doesn't have that color. But yeah, but I've read that sometimes the collar doesn't form because the rays don't break apart the right way. The collar is really just the the top part of the base, which forms the rays, and a crack forms, like a, a circular crack forms, like halfway down the ray, each ray, and that breaks apart. So the bottom part of the base becomes the rays, and the top part becomes the saucer. But I read there's at least one account that says with triplex, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> so oh, surprise. Numbers. Yeah, I don't, so I don't know. <laughs> Dave? 
Yes. I the name and one of my observations about Cilindro Basidium Laeve. I sent you an observation and the name for that oh, okay. to compare. David, uh, there's something called Morgana, Morganea. And did you look at that one in the Montreal? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did. I think okay. is that one of the ones that that where the rays get? No. Um, no. No. Yeah, no that's just one of the one books. Up, huh? Yeah. Um, I think I did look at that, and I'm not sure why I um, counted it out, but maybe I'll have to look again. Morganei. Yeah. What if it yeah. like any a possible way of identifying them would be in some of the basic phenotypes of this organism? Like at the top, all of those ripples, they have a certain number, maybe the extensions from the base. Like what what if there's like some type of way of identifying them by some seemingly simple yet basic difference between them I, like that i think, like the I think all the descriptions say that um the base breaks apart into five to eight rays um i'm, pre I'm pretty sure that was pretty constant across the board um now there's one of one or or two of the species mentioned um it is suggested that the beak has the uh folds or the ridges in it like you see on this one also, another thing that's pointed out is that one, some of them don't have the depression, the little, like a disc, like an annular depression sur surrounding um, the beak. And on this one, it looks like it doesn't sort of, but if you look on the left, it looks like it maybe does very faintly have a very, very faint um, um, indistinct depression. So. What I'm what I'm thinking is, are any of these these traits reliable? You know, do do any of them actually suggest a species, um, or or should there possibly may you know should there maybe be some lumping going on here? Um, I don't know. So Dave Marisol suggested that one book, but you know the yeah. other books, um, the Smith and Smith books that uh, how to know fungi. You ever see them? No. There's no. A, there's some books. Tim Baroni recommended them to me one time. It's um, um, yeah, Smith and Smith, I think. And they're called How to Know the Fungi. And there's different ones. There's one called How to Know the Non-Gilled Fleshy Fungi. Oh. And they're loaded with um, puffballs. There's all kinds of the puffballs oh. in there. Oh, okay. How to know the non-gilled fleshy fungi. By Alexander Smith, I guess. I think it's Alexander Smith. I think the first author is Helen V. Smith, and the second author is Alexander H. Smith. Yeah. So they're so they're dated, but I mean, if it's Alexander Smith, it's certainly worth looking at. Well, yeah. Then you know, you just cross reference with Index Fungorum or whatever. And but up, you know, yeah, it looks it looks updated. like it looks like they did do a lot of work on these things back in the day, and ah. maybe maybe it's just you know we forgot it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, those are some good suggestions. Thank you. And maybe I can make some headway on this. These, by the way, were not the best specimens. So maybe, maybe some of the features that I'm seeing are just withered and and not not really what they're supposed to look like. Uh, but it just seems I found other such you know um, Earth stars in the past that I thought were kind of confusing. So anyway, thanks. Mm -hmm. Tim Baroni said that he was still using those books um, as of a couple of years ago when he visited us in JMA. He said he was still using them in his classroom. So, oh, so if he's if he's vouching for him, mm -hmm. all right. So everybody, everybody knows about Schizophilum commune, and um, so when I got the Polypore book, one of the first things I noticed was there's another species of Schizophilum in there. And um, schizophilin uh, fasciatum or fasciatum, not sure how to say it. And the ones that are in the polypore book, the Bisset book, they look exactly like the ones that are pictured here. Um, so I started doing some microscopy. I thought, well, I'm going to look for these 
Cystidia, hymenial cystidia, it says in the Beset book. It's the only species of um, schizophyllum that has hymenial cystidia. But when I, when I tried to scope a little piece of the hymenium, I wasn't really sure what I was looking at. Um, so I'm not sure. Are these Bassidia? Um, are they just some sort of hyphae that yeah. on the end, you know, where I cut off the, um, the little piece? Uh, I find it very hard to keep track of what part of the of the piece of, of material I, I'm looking at when I when I scope them. Um, so I suspect these are not cystidia that, I, that we're looking at. That maybe they're basidia or something. Uh, but I couldn't really find this one right sort of middle right. Looks like it might have had some uh, on the right a little more. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one, yeah. And that one, look, does that look like it might have some sterigmata on it? But they're hard to see. My scope, you know, if I had a better scope, maybe maybe I could do a better job with this. Um, so this one right here in the middle, there's one right in the middle that looks like it's got like an arrowhead sort of shape on the end of it. And then there's one upper, the upper third. Um, it's, it's kind of wiggly looking. So I'm not sure what these things are. Uh, Bisset says that the um, uh, the cystidia on this um, unusual species of schizophyllum are supposed to look like alls, look like a cystidia is supposed to look cystidium is supposed to look like an all. So I looked up all, and of course there's like differently shaped alls. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not sure what, what I'm looking at here. So I just put it up on Mushroom Observer, sort of as could be. This, this alternative um, schizophyllum. And I'm not really sure how to, how to scope these things. They're, it's hard, it's kind of hard to cut through the hymenium because it's kind of sort of resilient. Um, okay, I said a few weeks ago, if I found some more rhizomerasmias pyrocephalus that I, that I would scope the gills and show the cystidia. So they hey, came hey, out again. Yeah, can I interrupt real quick? Sorry, yeah, sure, go ahead. Were there any morphological differences between those two schizophyllums that, that you can recall? Well, yeah, schizophyllum commune is usually more white. Um, typically, it's, it's sort of, um, it's attached to the substrate usually a little differently, not as, as, as sessile as, as those things I showed. It's usually got like a point of attachment. Um, a lot of times it's kind of round. Um, it's very, schizophyllum commune is very hairy. These were hairy too, but not, not as hairy as um, what you usually see with schizophyllum commune. So those seemed like some differences to me that you know, motivated me to try to look at it with my scope, actually. Um, awesome, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, a couple of pictures of the fruit bodies. Pictures came out pretty good, actually. These little guys are hard to photograph. Um, and that, that photo is not too bad, I guess. The gill photos came out pretty good. Uh, pretty funky looking gills. There's some weird sort of like almost forking type things going on. Um, so these grow right in, on my property. Ah, there we go. The hymenial cystidia. So... So those are pretty cool cystidia. Some of them are, are just like point pointed at the end, acute apex, like the one on the lower left and the one also in the lower middle. And then some of the other ones are, are capitate, right? They've got these round heads. And so these are, cla I would say clavate with either acute apex or capitate. And um, there's a lot of them. I mean, you find a lot of these. I think they're supposedly all Chylus um, So I'm just going to say that's probably what they are then. Um, I just did a smash mount, so I wasn't, you know, sure exactly what I was looking at. But this, this was a smash mount of a little bit of um, uh, stem material. So, so these are um, cholocystidia um, growing out of the stipe. So they look a little bit different, right? And the spores. 
the spores are they they're pretty distinctive really they're kind of like elongated lacrimoid so they kind of look like teardrops but he but elongated um but it's, the cystidia are the really cool things um, on these uh rhizomerasmias pretty pretty common species really but uh they're if you're if you're developing microscopy skills uh this is a good one to 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 bring home and, and, and scope gill material because it's not that hard to find the cystidia. Okay, what do we have here? What's this one? I forget. Uh, oh, um, so I guess is Virginia still here? So last week there was um, something that was posted that looked like this. It was like a cluster of little gray balls and and I think we, we ended up agreeing that, that it was some sort of ASCO, some sort of ASCO mycete. So, so I thought I would, I would include these just for the sake of um, maybe extending that discussion a little bit. These are lycogallet. You know, when I burst them open, they're, the interiors were sort of in between the, I guess, the toothpaste stage and the powder stage. Hey. It was a very damp, rainy, rainy sort of day, so they were kind of wet. So maybe maybe these were ready to shoot powder out, um, but but they were wet, so it was a little bit wet inside. Um, but I just thought I would. Um, I didn't do any microscopy on these or anything. I, I'm pretty sure, just from what we see here, we can say they're lycogala. Lycogala epidendrum. Lycogala, right? Sorry. That's lycogala. A, uh, epidendrum, probably most likely. Probably epidendrum, but apparently, as There's per some discussions I've had on Mushroom Observer. There's more than one species of these guys. There well. are, yes. We use, there's some really bigger ones, and there's some very small ones. Um, I had from New Jersey, um, like Cagala exiguum, which is smaller, and mm -hmm. the, um, the spores and the pseudo capillitium would be all smaller than epidendrum. Ah. Uh -uh. But um, yeah, most these are. Yeah, oh, mostly, mostly what you find is epidendrum. I That's think. my understanding. These, right. some of them are pretty big. Some of these were um, verging on a centimeter, you know, maybe eight millimeters or so. So that's a pretty good size yeah. for these guys, in my, my experience. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. Sure. You're welcome. Okay, Marisol. They, I just went on Amazon to look for that uh, book, how to know the non gill fleshy fungi, Pff, cheaper than dirt. There are few in Amazon. Oh, really? Yes, I just ordered one. <laughs> oh, well, next time we make an order, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, oh, okay. Right. All right. Yep. All yeah, right. That'll be a good one to have. Thanks. All right. So I went and, to. And did you, Marisol, did you get that name of the. Uh, um the crust oh yeah she put it in the chat i sent one to oh, one, oh okay uh, yeah, yeah one to you and one for everybody mm, okay so i went to anico island uh, like three or four days ago and i found this crust which i never saw anything like that before and i was very puzzled by i did the i tried to do the microscopy of it but it's like a piece of wood i could not Cut it, I could not get anything from it. I could not get the spores. The, the white part here is an old, old fruiting body. The other ones, the creamy ones, are new fruiting bodies. And so I managed to scrape the first from the first photo, a piece from the first photo. And um, when I wet it, oh my gosh, the smell that it released was horrible. Like, skunk mixed with herbs really disgusting so then i posted in um, cross fungi and polypores and um, I, I found um, uh, one of the type of cystidias that i found is called acantoifidia you will see that in the micro photos it looks like a brush kind of thing they call it like that can you show that look mm -hmm. 
that's when I scrape the surface that I got that. That's called acantoifidia. It has thick walls and projections. So they call it like a brush. And then I, this is my second attempt to scope it. And I cut a slice, but it was so thick. I could not do a good job in there. But the whole hymenium, the whole surface is covered with this. You, you look at it with the lens and it's completely covered. And actually there are two structures there. The one I just showed you before and another one that you can see here is, has a thicker tip and it has crystals on it. And then I look everywhere and somebody gave me a suggestion, but I didn't believe it that it was Syllobulus subpileatus. And I didn't believe it because this one has no reflex caps like around. And this seems perennial, it's really tough. And then one person suggested, she said that she read that um, Syllobulus subpileatus has that smell. Somebody had uh, experience with it and it has that smell. And then I look for the microscopic details and it really matches that. So it's a very rare um, resupinate form of Syllobulus subpileatus. And there are two species in this genus. The other one is Syllobulus frustulatus, which is called the ceramic parchment that maybe some of you are familiar with it is common. Right. It, it kind of, that makes sense when I look at this, because mm -hmm. usually when you see it, it's got, you know, the reflex yep. caps, but yep. it always it always does have this, the sheets of uh, mm -hmm. uh, resupinate stuff underneath of it. It does look yeah. like it. Yeah, and it is, when it's little, you can see on the top left, it's little circles that coalesce, coalesce, something like that that yeah. join later to form like a big patches of it. Huh. I'm about mm -hmm. to smell it now. Oh my gosh. It, but you have to wet it and rub it. Oh, okay. it's so stinky. It's really bad. This stuff but, is neat when you break off. Did you break off the wood and look at the rot? Uh, no. Because no. They, they call it pocket rot. And it, oh. it, it forms this really, when you actually see the actual rot, you understand why they call it pocket rot. See, I all, know, yeah, like cubes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, well, like all these little teeny tiny holes in there. Yes. It's a really interesting pattern. Mm -hmm. Cool. I was going to ask Marisol, is that pretty tough like the other xylobolus? Oh, yeah, it's like, it, yeah. it's like steel. It's like a rock. Oh, it's yeah. like really tough. Cool. Mm -hmm. It was a cool thing. I never found it in that form. Okay, so I went to the to Franklin Parker one day, I don't remember, but this week I had 10 days off from work and I went to the woods every other day. I found a million things. So I went to the place that we call the blue hole. It's some kind of man-made hole there. The water is blue. And there is a pile of sand in one side. And this lacaria was growing there on that pile of sand, pure sand. And then I took it out and I washed it in the, in the water. And there were three of them growing together, but only one made it out. The rest of them, everything was hidden in the, in the, in the sand. I washed it, I measured all the, the stipes uh, and the stipe is very long. I did the, it shared the spores. I did the measurements and it seems to match Mm, Lacaria, what name does it say there? Proxima. Mm -hmm. Lacaria Proxima. Can you show the other photo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has some kind of uh, scales on the top. And the, the style, can you show the, yeah, scales on the top. And there are three fruiting bodies there together. So these caps never went up. And the one on the right is all twisted. I unraveled it and measured it, and it was 8.5 centimeters long. And there were no colors uh, like purple at the tip of the, the stipe. So I went on mushroom, uh, mushroom expert, and it seems to match Lacaria Proxima. What do you think, John? <laughs> The master of Lacarius. Yep, it's a Lacaria proxima. 
Nice. Uh, the, the elliptical spores. Cool. You don't want to spores that elliptical. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I almost sent the, the mushroom to you, but then I went to look on Mushroom Expert and I said, oh, it looks like Lacaria proxima. Good, Perfect. thank you. Awesome. Then I found another Lacaria. Hey, Marisol, real quick. Yes. Was that rooted at all? Nope. No. It was just okay. hidden. I don't know how. Completely okay, awesome. buried. Yeah. Roots are fine. I thought it was going to be the one that is purple, but it wasn't. Okay, this is this. I found this the same day on the road to go to the blue hole in the side of the road. It was growing next to a very rotten piece of pine, and but it was still good. I worked on its micro. I got the spores. The only thing that I could not get was the milk. No latex didn't come. Yeah, yeah, and it, the stack is so short. So Nina gave me, when we went this group to the other side of Franklin Parker, and she told me that it may be Lactarius proximellus. So this one has the same characteristics. It's a little more faded on the cap, and it's, it's sunken on the, on the cap, and the, the stipe is like one centimeter, 0.5, something like that. It's really notorious for having that stipe so short. So I did the micro, it has beautiful cystidia, the spores are ornamented like Lactarius and Rusulas are. And it has the weirdest uh, uh, cysti calocystidia. You can see the tips. The, the green threads, I got a contaminant on my floxin, so I got to cle clean it, but I couldn't move it. So, but. I, but I wanted to show you that Kalocystidia is crazy on the tips. You talk about that mm -hmm. right, there, yeah. right there. Yeah, it's like constricted. In some tips are constricted and some other ones are more deformed, if I can say that, yeah. And I sent this one to, uh, to this lady, this German lady in the New York club. Jacob, what's her name? Sigrid. Yeah, Sigrid. I send it to Sigrid and she's going to do the DNA to see what it is, if it is what I'm saying. Okay. I posted this, um, this spore because it was so large, very different to the other ones, like a monster. And more of that funny Kalocystidia. And you can see a basidia in between the calocystidia with the four spores. Mm -hmm. Yep. Four spores. Basidia. Mm -hmm. I think she likes to have her own pace. Right. So she wants to have the flexibility that she's. Well, that, that's really interesting. The gills don't look like lactarium. Uh, lactarius. Oh, yeah. Lactarius. Oh, it's lactarius. Lactarius. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Lacta oh, okay. Yeah. In the same place where I found Silobolus subpileatus, I also find Silobolus crustulatus, and I found this one. They were in the same area. There is a lot of wood uh, on the beach on the Delaware River in Amico Island. And I found all sorts of cool things in there. So I found this, this polypore and I said, what is this? And wow. because I never saw anything like that. And, and then I mm, took it home and I did the, it shedded the spores and it's a very young specimen of Serena unicolor. I always find Serena unicolor old, like this big hairy cap. This one was very young. So it has a, a lighter color. But when I cut the, the, por, the pores, they are kind of grayish, brownish inside. Yeah. I've been stumped by this polypore more times, I think, mm -hmm. than, than any other polypore that I can usually identify. Yeah, this looks a little like something that I sent in that's in Another, another group of my observations that didn't come up tonight that I couldn't figure out. So maybe that's what it is. Mm. By the way, this is um, um, uh, another 
downvote for common names. Um, mossy, what, what is it? What is it being called? Mossy something polypore. Mossy maize polypore. Yeah, is, isn't there? Is doesn't that? Isn't that a name of something else also? The Dramatis mimosa has something close, something yeah. something weird because moss grows on it also. Yeah. Right. Is this yeah, super? Nice. Is this is this very hard? Kind of like an urpex or? Kind of, yeah, kind of. It's like super leathery, isn't it? Yeah. Like super leathery. Okay. And, and it ends with a very gray surface. It has a beautiful color at the end when it's all uniform, when it's all mature. Yeah. It's more, more, the aspect of the pores is more uniform. Here is like a mess. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful one. Yep. And then when I was going back to the parking lot in Amico Island, um, there are very huge uh, trees in there that could be nut, some kind of nut tree that I don't know names. And um, I found, I saw this and I said, hmm, this looks suspicious to me. And I, I um, there are two things growing in here. One is a slime mold and one is this uh, dirty yellow orangey stuff. And what happened is that it's a little old, but I said to myself, I found this before. And I, yes, it was what I found like a year ago in the same park. It's called, what's the name? It's Faro, it's Ferrosporium lignatile. Uh, so when you look at the lens with it, all you see is these global structures, inflated structures. It's like they pile up, they grow in chains. So this is a 100x magnification of a bunch of them. And now here I did 400. These two are still connected. So this is an asexual phase of something? This is, I don't know. I don't know. Because these would be Canadian spores, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an asexual, but I don't know which one is the other oh. part. I don't know that. All right. And so of the, I don't know the right name, the spores I call it, but it's not the right name are humongous. I put the measurements for this one, 400x. It almost take the whole screen. And you can see this one was really cool because you can see the area where it's connected to the other ones where when they are making the chains. That is fascinating. And look at when they are younger right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. When you look at the, the fungus with your lens, you see like sand. It like, looks like sand, like a grainy matter there. It's because of giant spores kind of thing. Because of these, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. When it's younger, it's more yellow. It's really pretty. But still, I could get some good photos of it. What did you stain that with to get that? Uh, I, I always use uh, red, Congo red, and sometimes I mix with fluoxine because it gives cool colors. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It gives One thing I have to ask about that is the fact that they're joined, well, would a possible purpose for that be maybe it's to ensure genetic similarity to prevent any type of deviance from the initial fruiting body. I don't know. The only thing that I know is that the asexual reproduction of some fungus is an easy way to survive, to, how do you say that? To make they're, sure that the fungus doesn't die. Yeah, okay. they're, they're clones of itself. Yeah. They're conjoined twins that become independent, but they share the almost the exact genetic code Due to that, well, it's I'm really not, fascinating. They, they, my understanding is the asexual phase. They are genetic clones of themselves. They're not sexually reproducing, so that's it's reproducing asexually because it's so difficult to uh, find like a compatible mating partner out in the world when you're yep so small. <laughs> like the movie. Every any of you ever see the movie Evolution? Oh, no. It's, it's a good movie. You should see it. 
Thank All you. Right, especially for that one scene where you see the organisms they have in a jar splitting apart. It's like, it appears they uh, reproduce by asexual processes. It's like, and there's the other guy who was looking at him and says, so no sex? And then David Duchovny's character looks at him and says, no time for sex. And then the girl, the student who was watching the conversation says, bummer. All right, thanks for that, Evan. All right, and thank you, Marisol. Thank you. Okay, so we have one more for tonight. Glenn, are you still with us? Yes, I am, thank you, All right, yeah. Great, I'm glad we could fit this in. So this will be our closing, uh, closing mushrooms. So you wanna tell us about what you found? Yeah, um, right on my property growing out of a black birch. And that's that I pulled it off and flipped it over so you could see the underside. And then I sent you another photo that had, yeah, the top. And, um, you know, there was a couple of big, um, they were pretty big. There was a good four or five inches across and um, a couple of, they were together. And the next day when I went out and looked, something had ate them and I'm guessing it was the squirrels, but. And I'm very new to this. This is my first time uh, joining you guys. And I was just curious as to what that might be. I was thinking maybe, you know, um, uh, Lenzite's betulina. I tried looking up uh, some kind of polyspore, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's that. They look a little too fleshy there. Yeah, it was really fleshy, soft, pretty big. Yeah, that mushroom you mentioned would be a little leathier, more leathery. Was was there a, a stem or anything to it, or was it attached? No, there was no stem. It was growing shelf-like hmm. out All of right. a black birch that was down. Anybody have any guesses? This might be a, a mystery here because it's a little little old and beat up. It's a real small. Could it be crepidotus? How big was it? It was pretty big. It was a good. Oh, you, oh, you said four to five inches, didn't you? Yeah, it was large. Oh, okay. One meter. Yeah, the large size suggests pleurotus. Just an old one that's really I, beat up. I agree. Yeah. It does look like maybe there should have been a stipe somewhere in there, like, like that little hole. I was thinking right there. Is that, is that where yeah. it was attached to the wood? Yeah, because it, well, actually, that. I pulled it off the wood and laid it down and took that photo. Right, but is this where it was attached, the spot here? Yes, yes, that's where it was attached, yes. Yeah, I guess that does that does look like a pleurotus, and that would make sense for the season. Okay, and how do you spell that? Uh, somebody want to type that in there for him? I'm on it. Yeah, that'd Thanks. be great. Thank you. And then I just had another photo, those guys, you know, and they were a lot smaller. And then I, I think I sent you another picture of the underside. I pulled one off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were growing also on a black, black birch. This and is what we were just looking at with Marisol, I think, the Serena unicolor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what is I, it? that's what that is. That looks like tricaptum. No. That mm -hmm. that that looks like it could be tricaptum, but when you flip it over, when you look at the underside, oh, yeah. it's not anymore. Is it is it that or is it um trematopsis cervina? Mm -hmm. They were they were really small, pretty thin, and they're all over all over that log. You don't have a better view of the underside, do you? No, that, that shot is the underside. That was the only one I have yeah. at the moment. Yeah, that's the best we're going to get. I can't even blow it up anymore. Yeah, okay. I will try and, and take better photos and be more prepared next time. But if you could type what you think that might be, um, that would be great. I, I'm going to stop sharing. What do you think? That was Birch? Oh, it was definitely black birch. So um, Susan suggested this one. Oh, Mike instant in there. 
Another one you might want to look at is this one. Although this is just, I'm not really that confident in that either. I mean, it certainly could be the Serena Unicolor. So. All right, great. Cool. Thank Thanks, Glenn, for sharing. Send that over. And uh, that brings us up to just after nine o'clock and another wonderful night full of uh, a lot of mushrooms, surprisingly, for this time of the year, right? <laughs> so. so, anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight and thank you for everyone that had uh, stuff to share. And uh, I guess we will see everyone next week, right? Cool. So, so have, a, have a great night, everyone. Luke, real quick. Yeah, sure. Uh, clear clarify something from earlier mm -hmm. uh somebody had asked about calibia where it ended up mm -hmm. and the omphalotaceae and mariaceae those are synonymous so they all ended up in the same family oh yeah yeah okay cool where did you find that at yeah, just Wikipedia. That next click, the Omphalotaceae, Omphalotus, Omphalotaceae, oh. and the Mariaceae are synonymous with each other. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Yeah. And I have something to ask too. Um, considering how, well, strange the weather is right now due to the massive cold snap, would there be any insight into what possible bloomings there might be due to this erratic um, ev weather events that well, we're dealing with right now. Well, it's, it's pretty frozen out right now. So my guess is we're not gonna see too many more guild mushrooms around here with it's freezing, except for maybe a few like the Flamelina velotypes and. Um, but you'll still find like crust fungi and there's still the polypores that are hanging on. If you flip, if you flip the logs over, you'll find stuff underneath of there. I have been finding a lot of shelves around where I am, but they do seem to be crusting over and dying off. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is winter time, so not a whole yep. lot's going to be growing over the winter. Well, best of luck. Yep. I guess, I guess. I guess once it really freezes up and the water's not moving anymore, that's when it really seems like it stops for the most part. Mm -hmm. so. But I'm just wondering if there are some types of mushrooms or fungi that take that type of environment to finally bloom. Like when everything else seems to be dead, they thrive. Yeah, well, flip those logs over, you'll find a lot of crusty stuff growing this time of the year. Excellent. So. All right. All right. Well, have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Luke. Thanks. Good night. Bye -bye. Cheers, folks. Thanks, Luke.